Hey and welcome to this video. So recently I posted a track that goes a little bit into that Elden Ring music style. And yeah, in this video, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a walkthrough of what I did and how I did it. So let's go. Okay, before we jump into the libraries and stuff, I just wanted to let you know that I recently released my video games music course. It's currently in early access mode. This means that you save $100. And the other thing is that you will be able, depending on your feedback, shape the content of this course. Also, I want to mention that this track actually is part of the course material and we are analyzing it into the tiniest bit and not only this but you also get access to the cubase session the midi files and the final loops that we prepare um, assuming this would be an in-game track for a video game so if you're interested check the link in the video description below and now let's head into that track here Okay, so let's head into the strings first. As for the sample libraries, I have used Novo by Heaviosity for all the strings except for the runs. I have used Vista by Performance Samples. And yeah, I think you can create some cool sounding runs. Again, I don't care too much how they sound isolated here. But in, in the track, it works. Uh, also, I have used Berlin Strings, the playable Glissandi from the Berlin uh, strings and you can do some really funny stuff with this so uh, basically what I did was just you know moving up and down on the keyboard here and it sounds like this so as if the strings would smear up and down the key uh, the, 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 the fretboard not the keyboard okay so let's listen to how these sound isolated here So basically moves on like this, nothing too special, um, but when you put it all together, it gets kind of like a rhythmic idea that already starts from the beginning. So let me just play you that again. So ba -ba -ba -ba. The entire track is basically based on this little motif here. Okay, so let's move on with the brass here. The libraries used is Caspian. Uh, let me just play Caspian isolated here for a second. Okay, and uh, the other 
library that I've used is Forzo by Heaviosity. And let me just play this isolated. So basically what you hear here is uh, the, 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 the same that Caspian plays, but just layered with Forzo. So let me just play Forzo alone. And I, I simply like the sound when these both are layered. It sounds pretty cool to me. Okay, so as you can hear again, uh, always this bam, ba, ba, bam, basically everywhere throughout the entire track. And let's move on to the woodwinds. Yay, woodwinds! <laughs> so I basically I didn't do the woodwinds justice, but I just wanted to use the woodwinds that should be the most prominent in the track. I could have used, you know, clarinet, oboe, or anything else, but uh, you know, it would also have changed the sound. And this is exactly the sound that I wanted, so I have used. Um, Abbey Road 1 woodwinds, the high sustain and staccato sounds. So let me just play these two isolated here. I just used them on some of the, you know, staccatos that I wanted to basically do combinations or combos of the instruments. Right, or some stuff like here. The other library I have used is basically my favorite woodwind library. It's Berlin Woodwinds. And I really love the flute runs and the piccolo flute runs. So let me play these isolated here for a second. So I've used them for all these little runs here. And so on. And also I have used uh, Vento, again by Heaviosity, for the contrabassoon ensemble staccatos. I really wanted to have not just brass and not just, you know, strings and, and then percussions. I mean, it's already uh, very heavy already, but I just wanted to have that color in there of these low contrabassoons and sounds so awesome here. And basically also the woodwinds, the, the runs especially, basically double the strings. So let me just play these two isolated here for a second. We have another run here. So it sounds kind of organic, at least to me. And I love the sound. And again, I don't care too much how it sounds isolated. For me, the most important thing is how it works in the mix. Okay, so let's talk about the orchestra percussions. Um, almost exclusively, I have used Pandora, Symphobia 4, and I really love this library, not only because it sounds great, so these are the symbols here, obviously, and um, but the cool thing is that you have this kind of like hits and rolls builder when you say, okay, two beats, and you just play one. It's exactly two beats in the tempo your composition is um written in. And uh, I have used also the Gran Casa, uh, the cymbals. Also, you can see that I've used two um, tracks here for the cymbals. So basically, the first one I named short. And this basically means that I have the uh, hits and rolls set to two beats and the other one here set to six beats. So I would always be able to have like a full bar of a crescendo roll because the track is in 6-8 and uh, for the short ones I pick two so I can switch back and forth I don't want any controller you know getting into the way and just switching back and forth and then you uh, want to play something from another point in the track and you forgot to switch or it didn't catch the key switch or whatever it is or the controller and then you always kind of have like the wrong it, it's too much clutter for me as I said before in many videos I'm an easy man and uh, I just rather have these both uh, split out so I know, okay, this is the two beats roll, this is the six beats roll, and so on. Okay, so and additionally, I have used, um, besides the cymbals, the Gran Casa, uh, the timpanis, and I have used uh, Cine Cymbals, Tubular Bell, and um, 
Yeah, so let's listen to how the percussion sound here for a second. Okay, so and so on. Next stop would be the cinematic percussion. I have used um, pretty sparse the HC01 low booms. So they're just happening once in a while to just put some emphasis on the downbeat. And for the basically the entire percussions besides the orchestra percussions that you can hear in this track is again Pandora Symphobia 4. Let, let me just play this here for a second. So again, I really love the sound of this library and also it's easy to just have like, if you have a roll here for example, sorry, you can easily program the roll in, you know, the amount. So I put four beats, so I know that this would be in 6.8 would be like, yeah, um, four beats <laughs> actually of the 6.8. And yeah, so you can, you don't have to look for the starting point, the ending point, whatever. You don't have to fiddle around with a mod wheel or something. You just get like a clean crescendo, a clean build, and it always works um, perfectly. Okay, last but not least, we have the choir library. And I mean, this choir library chorus by Audio Imperia works absolutely amazing on stuff like this. So let me just play you a bit. Uh, even when you listen to this isolated, it sounds really, really awesome. <laughs> Okay, so it just basically didn't do much. The only thing I took care about is, uh, you know, the dynamics. And uh, yeah, basically you can just have, you know, load your men and your women or whatever you want to use. And, uh, you know, just play what you want. And it sounds pretty awesome. So this is pretty much out of the pocket. Okay, so as for the mixing and the mastering process, the setup is pretty simple here. Uh, you can see that I have routed all of my instruments into the strings bus, all brass into the brass bus and so on. There is uh, basically the same setup on each of these channels here. I have a little bit of virtual channel to give it some analog feeling um, and also a compressor that compresses the signal. As for the strings, I have a little bit of fresh air on top to just kind of like make it edgy and more silky. And then I have separate instances of Altiverb for all of the sections. So basically the mix with the strings is 25%. Um, it's higher for the brass, maybe I think like 50 something, 40. And then we have uh, woodwinds probably like something like 35. And also I have applied a little bit of uh, reverb on the orchestra percussions. I usually don't do that, but I think for this track, I wanted to have a little bit of more, you know, kind of like natural sounding orchestral percussions. And uh, also I didn't change the mix of the, the, of, of the percussions in the libraries. I left everything as it is and checked how it sounds. So I, you know, if I, if, if there would be some problem, I could also take care of it later. If it sounds great, then it sounds great. Um, as for the mastering, uh, nothing too fancy here. It's just a little bit of compression. Um, I, I just love my drummer uh, compressor here. Just neutral setting, just dial it in a little bit here at 50%. And then I've used another, um, if you don't know this one, this is pretty cool, the DSM um, V3 uh, by um, Plugin Alliance. I would check that. It's basically a multiband compressor that analyzes your existing band, though you don't, so you don't kind of like, let's say, falsify the sound. Again, not ashamed here. I used Neutron to just get a little bit of uh, what the um, what the 
of, you know, the, the AI comes up with and what settings and then tweaking it from there, never leaving it as it is. Uh, most of the time I change it, you know, back the, the, the mixes a little bit and uh, get rid of the exciter, um, you know, kind of like not make the equalizer or the, the compressors, I mean, not the equalizer, the compressors too much going on. So turning down the mix a little bit and basically that's it. So I have a little bit of soft limiting going on. There is not much, too much happening. If you just listen to the track here, it's just hardly scratching. <laughs> On the heavy hits, it just once in a while gets down to like 3 dB or something, but that's about it. I mean, we're talking in-game music. This is not trailer music. You don't try to smash something. You don't try to make it, you know, reach some kind of like a distortion or some kind of like a juicy level on, on, on the hybrid tracks, especially. You don't try to draw... Uh, you know, square-sized or square-shaped sausages. <laughs> this is all just a kind of like in-game music that is happening, you know, in between SFX and, and other stuff. Uh, last but not least, my one of my favorite plugins that I have here is the Oxford Inflator, dialed in at something around 40 to 50 percent, and the final output minus 0 0.3 dB, uh, just in case if you compress that to um, mp3 for example there may be some little you know 0 0.1 db or whatever happening so you don't want to master that entire track on 0 db or never master exactly on 0 db and uh, yeah there's actually one thing i get asked very often it's about loof settings uh what are your loof settings? You know, all these things. What is your panning? Why are you not panning and all that stuff? And to be honest, I don't care about it as long as there is no request for this. So as long as I don't need to deliver at specific loof settings or on a specific average mastering level, I just use my ears and compare the tracks that I have written by using the same instruments, the same libraries, the same plugins, and to, to match the sound color or let's say the sound character of the entire soundtrack that I'm writing that potential game for. Um, yeah. So I don't think about this. And also, as you can hear for, for all of these or most of these libraries, they are pre-panned. So why, you know, kind of like change the sound that is already working. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. As mentioned in the beginning, if you are interested in a video games music course, check the video description below and you will find the link to the landing page. There is also a video on there that will explain what already is inside the course and what generally is going on. Again, thank you so much for watching. See you on my next video. Have a great week and see you soon. Bye.